Hi everyone, assalamu alaikum. So in this video, we are going to talk about the independent sample t-test as well as its non-parametric counterpart, which is the man with me u-test. So when do we use independent sample t-test? As you know, t-test is used to compare um, between two different groups, right? Only two. If it's more than two, you're going to do ANOVA. So for t-test, it's only two different groups. For independent sample t-test, these two groups must be independent. They must not be pet, just like our pet sample t-test. They have to be um, different groups. Okay, independent groups uh, mean that different people are in each group um, and they should be randomly selected within each group. So as you can remember, all of the t-test requires us to randomly select our sample. The objective of the independent sample t-test is to test if there's differences in means between two populations. Let's take a look at the hypothesis over there. There are no significant differences between group A and B. So this is for your null hypothesis. And for your alternative hypothesis, group A and B differ significantly. So for example, a research question signifies independent sample t-test would be something like, is there a significant differences uh, in the mean of self-esteem scores for males and females okay so statistics of interest as you can see it's it's pretty much the same with the rest of the t-test we want the standardized mean or our t-value uh, and that's how you calculate the t-value mean score one uh, di uh, minus mean score two divided by standard error please pay close attention to the df calculation for independent sample t-test, because you have two groups, the df is sample 1 plus sample 2 minus 2. So, if your df is 15, and if I ask you what's your sample size, it's going to be 17, okay? So, the two-tail probability of type 1 error or the p-value itself and the 95% confident interval for the mean difference as well as the effect size. Again, um, let me reiterate that you can write your effect size if you want to calculate it. And if you don't want to calculate it, it's okay for this class. As with all tests, um, the independent sample t-test also comes with its own assumptions. Um, the dependent variable must be continuous observations are independent of one another, dependent variables should be approximately normally distributed because this is a parametric test. Okay, should not contain any outliers and variances in the two groups must be similar. So this is something special. Okay, we don't have it in our pet sample or we don't have it in our one sample t-test. So it's called the homogeneity of variance. This is tested using the Levine's test. Okay, if, it's the, if this is unmet, you need to use the bottom row. So basically, your independent sample t-test will give you two rows of the Levine's test. Um, if this is violated, you use the second row. If the second row is not significant, you resort to a non-parametric test. I'm going to show you an example later on. Okay, so let's take a look at example number one. The researcher wanted to know if there is a difference in the mean starting salaries between male and female graduates. He selected a random sample of 20 males and 24 female graduates and recorded their first year salary. The data in thousands are given below. So the objective is to test if mean starting salaries differ between male and female graduates. As you can see, we don't have an equal number of sample in each uh, group. So for our null hypothesis, there are no difference in the mean starting salary between um, genders or between male and female or the mean starting salary are significantly different between male and female for our alternative hypothesis. So let me just pull my, um, okay, my data here. It's already inputted. Okay, so let me show you something. For independent sample T, our, um, the way we input the data is a little bit different. Okay, so let me just show you here. Organize them like this. So number one indicates male and number two indicates female. Because they are different respondents, remember? They are di re different respondents. These are their characteristics. So respondents number one, respondent, sorry, respondent number one is male. As I scroll um, further, respondent number 40 is female. Okay, so this is how you input it in the data. Okay, so let's run our analysis. So we go to analyze. Again, uh, this is a t-test. So you need to compare means. This is an independent sample t-test, so click on independent sample t-test. So the test variable is the mean salary, and the grouping variable 
these respondents are grouped according to their, for example, gender. So let's define the group. Group number one is actually one and two because that's how I quote my gender. Okay, so options, we don't have anything in options and we don't need bootstrap. That's all. So you click on OK. Pretty simple, eh? Right? Okay, so let's take a look at the output. As you can see, first we need to take a look at the mean. The mean uh, for the mean starting salary for the male graduates is 27,900. And the mean starting salary for the um, female graduate is actually 24,000. With a standard deviation of 3.539 and 4.128. So let's take a look at the um, results of the test itself. As I mentioned earlier, for independent samples t test, it's a little bit special because we have to assume homogeneity of variance. And this can be done by checking at the Levine's test for equality of variances. The threshold for the Levine's test needs to be more than 0.05 so that we don't violate the assumptions for homogeneity of variance. Let's take a look at the Levine score over here. It's 0.148, which is more than 0.05. Therefore, it can be assumed that Levin's equality of variance is um, upheld or um, the homogeneity of variance is upheld. So the statistics in the first row will be used. Okay, so let's take a look at the sample mean first. We have already talked about that earlier on. And let's take a look at the test statistics. Mm, the mean difference is 3.90. Mean difference, 3.90. Standard as difference T value. 3.375 with a DF of 42. How do we get 42? It is 20 plus 24 minus 2. Okay, so the two tail p-value of the test is uh, 0.002, which is significant. It, uh, it tells us that there is a significant difference between the mean starting salary for the graduates according to gender. All right, so the 95% um, confidence interval for mean differences, you can see it over here, the lower bound and the upper bound, which does not contain zero because both is positive. And then we have also, we also have the ERA squared. Why do we have the ERA squared? Uh, because this is calculated manually. Okay, if you don't want to calculate it, it's okay, no worries for this class. So how do you report it according to APA style? Sorry, there's a typo over there. An independent sample T test was conducted to compare the mean starting salary between female and male graduates, there was a significant difference in the mean starting salary for male. You have to put in the, uh, the mean and the standard deviation. So this is according to the APA format. Okay, and the female graduates mean equals to 24, standard deviation uh, 3.54. Okay, with a T and in bracket is your DF equals to 3.375 with a p-value of less than 0.05. The male graduates were paid an average of 27,900, whilst the female graduates were compensated an average of 24,000. If you want to um, indicate the differences, you are most welcome to do so. We are 95% confident that the difference is between 1,568 and 6,232. So in this um, APA format reporting, I did not put in the conclusion um, saying that the males are paid better than the females. You can go ahead and do so, okay? So where do we get this? This is from your lower bound and upper bound. Let's take a look, okay? This is lower bound and upper bound because this is in thousands. So you just move the decimal points, right? So that's for um, example number one. Okay, so let's... Pay close attention to example number two, uh, where a manufacturer wanted to test if a new additive improves the tear resistance in plastic product, whether it is be um, it, it will be harder to tear the plastic or it's going to be easier. Okay, so in a design, in an experimental design, so he prepared nine plastic sheets without the additive and nine more with the additive. All 18 plastic sheets were subjected to the same stress test and the tear resistance value were recorded. So as you know that um, adding in additive to our manufacturing processes is going to be, um, it's going to cost us money, it's going to be more expensive. Um, so we want to test whether it's worth it for us to add the additive or not. So the objective is to test if the additive, additive improves um, tear resistance so that our plastic would be um, better. The hypothesis is that the new additive does not improve tear resistance in plastic product and the alternative hypothesis is that the new additive significantly improved the tear resistance in the plastic products. So I already have my data in my SPSS over here. So how do we do this? We just go to compare means, go to independent sample T, 
um, the test variables would be our test tear, tear resistance and the grouping variable is our additive. So in my data, I group the, the one with additive as number one and the one without additive as number two. You need to know this or you need to label this or uh, put in the values in the SPSS because if you for, forgot about this, you can't interpret your data later on, okay? So define the values. Group number one is number one. Group number two is number two. Go to continue. I don't need anything from options. I don't need anything from bootstrapping. So click on OK. And then wait for the results to come out. So there you go. Um, we need to describe the mean first. Um, as with other t-tests, we need to describe the mean first. Let's take a look at the test statistics. Um, oh no, our Levine's test indicates that it's significant. Therefore, we have violated the assumptions of equal variance or homogeneity of variance. Let's go back to our slides. Okay, the sample mean with additive is actually 3.53. Mm, it looks that with the new additive, our plastic is stronger than without additive with a standard deviation of 0.885 and the sample mean without additive is 2.88 with a standard deviation of 0.172. The p-value is significant. Less than 0.05, so equality of variance is therefore not assumed. We have to use the test statistics in the second row. But before we can finally use it, you need to test whether it's distributed normally or not. So let's split the file and look at the skewness. Okay, go to data, split the file, compare groups. Groups are compared based on the additives. And then we go to descriptive, go to descriptive, tear resistance, we just need the skewness. Okay, you can see the skewness is um, 0.848 for the one with additive. For the one without additive, it's negatively skewed. So it's in the opposite direction. It seems that it's not normal and we need to use our non-parametric test. Okay, there you go. Since the skewness is in the opposite direction, the statistics in the second row cannot be used. In this case, a non-parametric analysis must be used. So you have to say hello to the Mann-Whitney test. Okay, the non-parametric Mann-Whitney test. So how do we run the Mann-Whitney test? So remember, we split the file earlier. You need to undo that. Okay, you need to reset. Okay, split file off. Go to analyze. Go to non-parametric test because our sample is independent. Go to independent samples. Okay. Go to fields. Test field will be the tear resistance and the additive is the grouping variable. Go to settings. Customize the test. We want the man with me you. Okay. And then we want the Hodges lemon. That's all. And then you can run the test. Okay. The non-parametric test indicates that you need to reject the null hypothesis. See, non-parametric is so uh, simple, it gives you the answer straight. Reject the null, accept the alternative hypothesis. Okay, as for the hodges lemon, it gives you the lower bound, confidence interval, and the upper bound. So this is the z-score for the man whitney u test. Uh, your standardized test statistics is the z-score. Okay, and let's go back to our slides over here. There you go. The sum of ranks. So this is how you report it. This is the conclusion. The sum of ranks for tear resistance with additive is 108.54 because they are ranked. So you need to calculate the sum. How do we, I get this? So remember the one with additive, okay, equals to 9, right? We have 9 observations. The mean rank for the one with additive is actually 12.06. So you multiply by 9. Well, the sum of ranks for the tear resistance without additive is only... 62.49. Again, 6.94 multiplied by 9, number of observations. Based on the man with new test, the p-value is 0.042. Okay. Or you can use this one. Okay. Asym asymptotic or the exact. It doesn't matter. Both is still acceptable and is okay because it doesn't make a lot of difference. Since the p-value is significant, that the p-value less than 0.05, there is a difference in the tear resistance between the plastic sheets uh, with additive and without additive. Additive seems to make the plastic stronger. Okay, so I would pause here for you to run this exercise and compare it to my answer. Okay, let's take a look at exercise one. 
uh, lecturer wanted to test if there is a difference in the mean aptitude level for statistics between hotel management and tourism management students. So the lecturer wanted to see if there's any difference in the statistical scores for um, students between programs. He selected a random sample of 18 and 15 students from the two departments respectively. The results of the test are as below. Okay, so objective is to test if there's a difference um, between hotel and tourism management students. The hypothesis would be uh, the mean aptitude level for statistics between hotel and tourism students differ significantly. So let's test. Okay. So go to analyze. Go to um, compare means and then independent sample t. Aptitude score, grouping variable is program or department and you define the groups. Click on OK. OK. So let's see. So the mean for um, number one is hotel management and number two is tourism management. The mean for the hotel management student is 57.67 and for the tourism student is 59.87. Let's take a look at the test statistics. Um, the Levine's test uh, shows that it is not significant. Uh, therefore, the statistics in the first row can be used. Let's go back to our slides. Okay. So describe the mean and the standard deviation first. And then the findings would be the Levine's test. Mean difference is 2.20. Standardized difference is T. Uh, where's the T? There you go. The T uh, with the DF of 31. So how do we get the DF? The DF is um, both of the sample minus 2. The two-tailed p-value of the test is 0.197 over here, which is more than 0 0.05. So it shows that it is not significant, right? So there's not going to be any significant differences in the aptitude scores um, between the students of uh, different programs. Confidence interval um, would be negative, uh, negative 5.60 then 1.202, which contains the tested value of 0. So, let's go to the conclusion. The 95% confidence uh, interval for mean differences contain the tested value of 0, the p-value of more than 0 0.05, eta squared of less than 0.15. How do I know? I calculated the eta squared. If you don't have the eta squared, do not copy and paste and say eta squared is less than 0 0.15 because I will ask you to show where's your eta squared, okay? This suggests no difference in mean aptitude level for statistics between students of different departments. It doesn't matter. Okay, right. Let's go to the next exercise. So a dentist wanted to test if a new dental material is superior in terms of its sheer bond strength compared to the one currently in use. In an experimental design, he prepared 10 specimens with the new material and another 10 specimens with the current material. So we are testing for new material, whether it, it holds up better than the old material. So all 20 specimens were subjected to the same test and the shear bond strength values were recorded. Okay. Objective is to test if there's a difference between the shear bond uh, in the shear bond strength between dental materials. So the alternative hypothesis would be there are significant differences. So let's not waste our time and run the analysis. Analyze, go to compare means, independent sample T. Test variable is our bond strength. Material is grouping material. Define the group. 1 and 2. Okay. So in my data, the new material is coded as number 1 and the old material is coded as number 2. Right? So let's take a look at the results over here. So the mean for uh, the one with the new material is 6.63110 and the second, uh, this, uh, the, the old material is um, 6.04. Let's take a look at the Levine's. Um, our Levine's is significant, uh, therefore we need uh, we need to identify um, the second row of the test statistics. Uh, this shows that our assumptions for homogeneity or variance is um, violated. So the next thing that you need to do is to see whether whether the data is actually normally distributed, and you can do so again the same uh, same thing. Compare groups according to materials. Okay, so let's compare them. And then we need to check for the skewness. Let's go to options. We want skewness. Okay, there you go. It seems that the skewness is again in the opposite direction. Therefore, we need to run our non parametric test. Uh, remember before running our non parametric test, because we have already split the file, um, you need to reset it, analyze all cases again. Okay. And then go to non-parametric analysis, go to independent samples, 
we go to fields, um, test fields is bond strength and the group is material. Um, settings is um, customize the test. We want Man Whitney and we want Hodges Lemon and you run the analysis. Okay, the the Man Whitney test uh, indicates that we should retain the null hypothesis. It indicates that whether it's old or the new material, there's no significant differences. Okay, let's go back to our slides. So you need to specify the mean and the standard deviation first, as uh, as usual. P-value is um, 0 0.00. Uh, statistics in the second row will be used, but the skewness is in the opposite direction. So, so let's take a look at our slides. As you can see from the test summary, it tells us to retain the null hypothesis. It simply indicates that there's no significant differences. If you want to take a look at the test statistics, you can see that the significant two-tail is also not significant. That means... Um, it doesn't matter if you use the new materials or the old materials, the bond strength is um, not going to be, there's not going to be any significant differences. Um, so you don't need to uh, specify the sum of the ranks because it's not significant, right? So we stop there. Like, the new material is not superior than the one currently in use. That's all. So we are done with independent sample T and in our next video, we are going to talk about ANOVAs. I'll see you in our next video. Thank you.